That's right, we are finally back. We have new stuff to do. I see Gerald has been waiting patiently, so let's not keep him waiting for long. Hello, my name is Shadow Galate, and welcome to the PWC Pokemon World Championships. Not as prestigious as you think, but we'll go with it. Season 6! And oh boy, have we got the team for you today. Not just because of a certain something you'll see later on, but I personally believe this is one of the finest teams I have ever drafted. I say that a lot, but I think the synergy and the coverage we have today will prove to you that this is a masterpiece of team design. Not really. Let's get right into it. First things first. This league has a little gimmick, you might say. The first round of every draft, we have to pick a low tier mon, and that low tier mon has to come to every single game. No, I'm not making memes. This is, this is a legitimate rule. We gotta bring it every time. So we need to pick a mod, and I wanna say, you know what? I'm fine with bringing back consistently a powerful beast. Something that will crush the competition. Something that won't die to HP water because it no longer exists. We have the Camerupt. That's right. Camerupt is the mod that we will have to bring to every game. Not our real first pick. But this, this is the good stuff. So let's talk about what Camerupt can do. For one thing, it has those beautiful mixed attacking stats. Base 100 attack, 105 special attack. No matter what side of the spectrum you're looking at, this thing is quite powerful. Not only that, its base 40 speed does have its uses when compared with Trick Room, depending on the scenario. Not only that, it is a nice stealth rocker, always great to get those immediately. And Solid Rock turns it into a nice tank depending on the matchup. Plus its typing of ground can be handy in many scenarios. And with our second pick, Camerupt will only get stronger. But since we have to bring it to every game, we do need to build around it. So how do we build around the Camerupt? Well, it's simple. Do you guys remember MLP Season 11? We had Mega Camel then. But we didn't have Grassy Gliderilla Boom! Oh man, now this is something I could say I'll pick first. What can I say about Rilla Boom? Grassy Glide, nothing's taking this thing in grassy terrain. Nothing at all. Earthquake Protection is great for some of our later mods. We'll get to them later. And this thing, just like, some of our mods will never die with both Leftovers and Grassy Terrain Recovery. And while our opponents get that too, that's not really an issue here, as we're just gonna overpower them, and we can plan around this in team building. And the fact that Camerup has to come to every game, like the opponent knows they're gonna have to deal with Camerup in some other way, but they also have to deal with Rillaboom, because this thing is a beast. Oh man, I am so excited to use this thing. I wanted to use a Rillaboom for some time now, but it's always been drafted from my clutches! But... I believe this thing will serve us well. For our third pick... <laughs> Brandon, if you're watching this, I know you're gonna hate me for this. Aegislash, not Aegislash, fight me. Anyway, let's talk about what Aegislash can do. What Aegislash does, it plays mind games with the opponent, basically. Do you click King Shield or not? Now, that's, that's what the opponent has to decide. Is it worth risking this turn and risk taking a Shadow Ball to the face, or do I want to lose my attack. Now, it's not the monster it used to be in Gen 7, but don't let that fool you, it is a monster, a powerful beast. You do not want to mess with on the wrong matchup. Not only that, with Camerupt, it's going to take Fire Blasts are not an issue for it, and it's immune to Earthquake, essentially, with Rillaboom's Grassy Terrain. I am loving this team so far. Bit of a fire problem, but Camerupt is coming to every game, so I think we can deal with some fires fairly well. Other than that, his coverage is okay. I am looking forward to Sacred Sorting some Dark types who want to get cocky here. Shadow Sneak is always good as I love my priority users. And this thing will refuse to die if it's sub toxic. Which I will hopefully not be doing, but knowing me, I will. Next up, I decided to pick a Mega. And this is an unconventional Mega, I'll admit. Not gonna lie, I actually debated going without a Mega this draft but I figured it would serve us decently well with the utility it could provide. And I needed a Ferret-type. Mega Altaria! 
Now, Mega Altaria. What can I say about Mega Altaria? Well, you see what it does. It is powerful. Even though we lost... Even without a full-powered Pixlate or Return, it still deals a nice chunk with Body Slam. Not only that, this thing can still set up Roost... Uh, not Roost. T-Dance and Sweep, even under Grassy Terrain with the nerfed Earthquake. That thing, like, Fire Blast still hurts coming off of its 110 special attack. So your Steel types aren't exactly safe. Not only that, the type utility of being Fairy and Dragon, that thing will never die. It's just gonna stand there, look at his watch and thinking, I could be a Chick-fil-A right now, but it said I had to be here taking punches to the face because someone can't kill me. And I am excited to use this as my dragon. I've always wanted Mega Altaria, but I've never gotten to it. So I'll make up for that last time here. Speaking of things I've never used before, Greninja, you can see it's Torrent. Protea and Battle Bond will be broken, and we are not going to allow that. But do not let that fool you, this thing is insanely powerful. Even without, like, you forget, even without Protean, it still has Stab on Dark Pulse and Hydro Pump, so it still deals a metric chunk. Not only that, Water Shuriken, again, I love myself some priority. It's something I rarely ever get to do. I get to Hazard Stack. Yeah, I know. Hazard Stacking is a fun playstyle, and depending on the matchup, it will win games if they don't have a Poison type. We do have a Poison type, which I will get to in a minute. Finally, its base 122 speed is great as a cleaner. It's comparable to Intellion from PMC. And you know what? That thing took us to finals. But with synergy like this, who knows how far we'll get with this team? Probably not very far in my book. For our next pick... Listen. Listen. It's been how many seasons now since PMC? You, might have, you know I mentioned PMC for a reason. I need to tell you guys something. People need to move on from things, you know? We have our grudges. We have beef with people. I want to shoot myself when I say this. We have this piece of shit right here. It's blurred out. That's how much I hate it. <sighs> yes, we picked up the Galar Slow King. Let's go over why. One thing, its its various resistances will be quite valuable for our team and synergizing with the Greninja pick. It synergizes well with Grassy Terrain as now Earthquake can't even kill it. If any ghosts want to shoot in the face, we have Greninja right there. And overall, killing fairies is a valuable trait so we don't just dump that whole thing on Aegislash. And you've seen this thing in action in numerous leagues against me and I have never beaten it until Radical Resonance. You know this thing's power. I know this thing's power. I wish I didn't know its power. But, at the end of the day, it does do well with our team. Not only that, this opens up Trick Room to be useful with mods like Camrupt, Age of Slash, and future picks. So do not underestimate this thing, because if they did, they're pulling a me, and they should never pull a me. Please don't pull a me. I don't like it when people do me. I've never been done before. Speaking of synergy with Galar Slowking, and massive special balls, I say. The Big Bear Snorlax! <laughs> I love this thing. I don't think I need to explain what Snorlax does. If you need me to explain what Snorlax does, you've never- Either you're lying, or you're new to the community, and I've never played against the Snorlax. Like, if you have a good enough fighting type, Snorlax is dead weight. Guess who has a Galar Slow King Age slash Mega Altaria right there to take them. <laughs> and if you're not well prepared for Snorlax, you lose. It, it's that simple. You just, you're dead. You're gone. Goodbye, Tootles. Snorlax is a monster. It doesn't need return to Curse Sweep. Even then, it has plenty of nice coverage. Or it could just Fairy Stall, which I didn't want to try actually. And it's a special tank that refuses to die. We have a specially oriented opponent. We can't lose. It's, it's physically impossible for us to lose. Look at this stuff. It is amazing. Not only that, being either immune to toxic or taking less damage from certain, uh, certain signature mods, it's a, it's a pretty cool niche to have. 
Snorlax is a beast, and I will gladly take him on the team of the Carolina Toros heels. Next up, I wanted a rocker that's not Cameron, because I want Cameron to just be blasting everything into oblivion. So how do we fix that issue? We could just stick with Spike's hazard stacking. That ain't good enough for me. So we have Lycan Rock Day! You might remember him from CPL. We shouldn't do that. First things first, you notice how I said Sand Counter on his purposes list? Our first opponent has extra drill. Go ahead, bring sand! See what happens! So not only will it dissuade our opponent from bringing sand, but this thing is also plenty fast at 112 speed. Not quite Greninja tier, but it'll get the job done. Excel Rock is amazing coming out of its 115 attack stat and stab. This thing also got some nice uh, coverage and so on shield and stuff like drill running close combat. And finally, it's a rocker. I like Stealth Fox, what can I say? Stealth Fox is it's very nice to have. I've learned my ways of not needing Stealth I've learned to go against not needing Stealth Fox. I've learned the light. I've seen the truth. I've seen things. And it is good to see. I'm looking forward to Lycan Rock. This thing's going to hit hard and say, try it. Next up, since we're calling it Flashbacks, let's bring in Triagonal! Wow, I, again with the special walls. I just, I hate special walls. I'm sorry, it's that simple, really. First of all, it's a nice Dragon Killer, not that we needed more of those. We already have Altaria and Aegislash. But realistically, the main thing I took it for was because of a Rapid Spinner. I do like my Rapid Spinners. Hazard removal that allows me to just keep hazard, hazard stacking. I like stacking things. On top, on top, and on top. Some more. And I can't really say more to that. It's just like, it hits decently hard at base 95. It is a special tank. And it is a speedy boy. Finally, our second to last pick, and last one on this slide, is Cupfei. Much like Triagonal, it is hazard removal. It takes away our hazard stacking abilities, but we're not exactly, we're not exactly gonna be hazard stacking every single game. That would be stupid. Again with the special walls. We are immune to everything not named Psyshock. But one of the most terrifying things to realize you're not prepared for is Combine Triage Comfey. You would be surprised how terrifying that thing could be to deal with. Not only that, it's immune to other priority users that may want to revenge it because it has priority itself and it will have faster priority because it's plus three, not plus one priority in Draining Kiss. Also, it is a nasty subseat set, which will just, please, let me die instead. Like, it'll make your opponents want to die. And finally, for our last pick, Geraldo! He's, he's my baby boy. And by the way, we got into the Ocean League again. I'm gonna spoil this for you now. We drafted him there, too. Our son will be with us for all time. He is my baby boy, and we will love him as such. And if you don't love Geraldo, we're gonna have a talk later. And that is the BWC. I am loving this team. One of our finest works yet, in my oh-so-not-so-humble opinion. I'm looking forward to this one. So yeah, that's what I think. And our first opponent, like I said, is a sand user. We have Lincoln Log for that. Let's get it! Go Toros Heels! See you guys week one.